thank you first of all uh, to Michael for that introduction and posing that really interesting question, which I hope I'm going to go at least some way to to um, helping answer. Um, and also to to Mike Ferguson for the um, for, for for setting the scene really and, and helping us put into context what we're trying to achieve through much of our endeavours um, working in, in in the UK spine. So it's it's a it's a real pleasure to be asked to to represent uh, the work which is going on um, to develop um, that that porous drug discovery pipeline. Um, very honoured to represent the work of many people, and hopefully I'll. Uh, bring that out over the course of the next few minutes. Um, and also thanks to the UK Spine team for funding this work. It's it's important that that, that work is, has, has been funded, I believe. And from the perspective of uh, the Medicines Discovery Catapult, where, where I work, we, we've been fortunate to be able to engage in a number of innovative activities uh, funded by UK Spine, um, including the development of uh, Drug Discovery Roadmap, which I'll, I will mention today, uh, some innovative informatics work, which uh, my, my colleague, uh, Professor John Overington and his team have been leading, and as well as the, uh, the development of the porous drug discovery pipeline through one of the flagship uh, projects, which we are conducting in very close collaboration with colleagues of, of Mike Ferguson's at the University of Dundee. And I'm very pleased to be able to, to represent the collaborative efforts of all of those people today. So why is drug discovery potentially so important um, for aging? Um, well, we've heard of, of in, in to, today's uh, um, in first couple of presentations around the fact that there have been a number of reports um, and publications and, and calls to arms around tackling the so-called problems of an aging society. And um, the government has obviously set a challenge for um, helping ensure that um, our population can enjoy at least five extra healthy independent years of life by 2035. And that's not far away. You know, we're, we're rapidly approaching that date and um, that, that's a, a big challenge for us to, to seek to address. And uh, in a recent uh, report, which was uh, published by the, the House of Lords Science and Technology Committee, um, entitled Aging, Science, Technology and Healthy Living, there was a point specifically made around the, the potential opportunity for the development of treatments targeting the aging process. And uh, quote here, understanding the biological processes underlying human aging opens up the potential pharmaceutical interventions that target these processes. Now that's a call to arms for all of us engaged in um, drug discovery and the identification of novel prosecutable targets. And so through the, um, the, the, the work of, of, of UK Spine, we're, we're starting out on that endeavour. And as you'll probably be aware um, from the literature, there has a, a been a, a variety of, um, of other more specific publications alluding to targets, their relationship to disease processes, how the drug discovery, the drug discovery challenge might be, might be taken up. And colleagues, um, uh, also funded by Spine, including um, Professor Chad Lord, uh, Mike and others, wrote a, a, a publication uh, quite recently which um, alludes to much of this and which um, in parallel led to the, the um, ITAC proposition which, uh, which Mike Ferguson has, has mentioned previously. And I'd just like to touch on that because it serves to, as, as the backdrop what we're doing in the porous pipeline. So this is around addressing the, the challenge of, uh, of drug discovery, which, be, which has been set to us. And our, our proposition is to develop pipe, pipeline or pipelines of assets, um, which are fundamentally challenging the, the, aging pro, the, the underlying aging processes in order to tackle uh, premature aging and the, the consequences of multimorbidity. And uh, in the centre of this figure, you'll see um, something which, which Mike walked us through earlier on. But I think the, 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 the purpose with respect to my talk is around um, how we create that porous pipeline to help accelerate drug discovery, how we can identify um, and turn into drug discovery innovations 
um, really exciting and novel life sciences uh, findings and move them forward to clinical evaluation. And that's being um, addressed by uh, ourselves and colleagues uh, working collaboratively at the UK Spine. And it is an absolutely collaborative venture. So the organisations whose logos are represented at the bottom here, the founding partners, and along now with, with, with uh, the EBI and Open Targets, are working collectively on this problem. And I'll open that up uh, as, as I go through my presentation. Again, you'll have seen this similar slide, but I think the, the purpose I want to draw from this is to show the areas that we're focusing on uh, with respect to this um, porous pipeline. So really we're focusing on the identification and selection of interesting targets with a, a good relation to, um, and a good reason to believe with respect to how they are involved in fundamental processes in, the age, in, in aging and how those are potentially misaligned during poor aging. We heard yesterday um, around uh, poor aging and, and how that might have significant outcomes. So identifying those, selecting them, and then through established drug discovery norms, uh, putting into play uh, target validation um, uh, processes, assay development processes, and uh, those processes of, of, of hit to lead. And I'll take you through the journey of, of, of where we've come up to. And we're hoping through that process to identify and develop a portfolio of, of innovative assets, which can be attractive for commercialization, and will then bring other parties to, um, to, to join us in this endeavor and open up the, the, uh, the, the I guess, the, their, their pipelines and, and, and their screening endeavors to further uh, targets. So that's the kind of space we're working in. It's, it's that, that early uh, target selection through to uh, lead candidate development with the potential to, to move into clinical development in the future. So how we do this is through bringing together the fantastic assets that our various institutions um, are, are privileged to be able to, to, to work on. So from a, from a practical standpoint, a laboratory standpoint, both ourselves in the Medicines Discovery Catapult and our colleagues at, uh, at the Drug Discovery Unit in Dundee are fortunate to have access to some of you know some of the cutting edge technologies which can be applied to uh, drug discovery. Um, so we've got um, innovative uh, platforms uh, to to aid high throughput screening, uh, functional high throughput screening, etc. To to dis to discover hits and develop novel leads, uh, which can which occurs at um, on, on on assays which have been de developed jointly by ourselves, colleagues in Oxford and also in Dundee, to take those forward into uh, bespoke cellular uh, uh, assays and to look at how these are then um, engaging the target and modifying biology. And ultimately, we'll be able to move those into um, in vivo models, although we're not there yet. And we do have, through our collaborations, uh, both those which we, the Catapult, can bring from our CRO network and those at Dundee, a range of other models which are essential for prosecuting novel therapeutics and bringing them forward toward the clinic. And an aspect that has been mentioned and was discussed um, a lot yesterday is around biomarkers. And we're also fortunate in the Catapult to have um, significant capabilities in the development of novel biomarkers. And we're bringing those to the table here with this, with, with this project. And we will be seeking to develop uh, novel biomarker signatures associated with the, with, with the targets that we're, that we're prosecuting. So as I say, we, we, we're developing what looks from the outset like a, a traditional drug discovery pipeline, which would hopefully give comfort to those who may want to um, innovate and work with us that we're doing things in a rigorous, industrially acceptable standard. But it's porous to the point where assets can come in and out of this pipeline and be developed uh, jointly or on behalf of, of, of others um, and, and, and developing value in that, in that context. So what we don't also assume is that potential collaborators will have an understanding of how to take their innovative research into, in, into drug discovery. There may be some, some you know, really exciting work going on in academic labs uh, with, with PIs who have been working on targets, 
for mechanisms for many years and um, have got you know huge knowledge of, of their target areas and how that might be applied, but not necessarily how to bring that into play in a drug discovery setting. So um, with the with the backing of UK Spine, we've we've worked um, in the catapult to develop um, a roadmap for how that could be could be achieved. And we've we're just about to, and we I think I believe we have now through uh, UK Spine launched our roadmap for translation of mechanisms of aging into drug discovery. And I think that can probably be accessed via the UK Spine uh, website as well as our, our own website at the Catapult. I won't go into this in much detail, but hopefully it, it helps. It will help um, innovative biology be translated into drug discovery. Um, and this will serve as some kind of backdrop for that, for, for those who wish to, to know more. And clearly we're there to be able to, to, you know, to, to, to interact with and to, to advise if, if necessary. But the point of this as well for our for ourselves is it, it helps formulate our ideas and how we develop that, that pipeline. So on the bottom here at the left, we, we, I've got a graph which looks very similar to the one which was shown yesterday by, by Thomas Jackson, um, looking at the, uh, uh, the aging process, um, what causes apparent aging, how we want to move the curve toward the right to get increased um, numbers of healthy years. But underlying that are the, the, the so-called uh, nine hallmarks of aging, those, those pillars which have been um, exemplified in the literature and from which we can um, then dive into the biology and, uh, and, and from that then move into a screening cascade by aligning innovative um, assays and screening outcomes uh, to, to, those, to those, uh, those hallmarks so that we actually develop um, assets related to targets which have an impact on the, the, the aberrant changes in those fundamental cellular processes. And then also how interplay between those uh, can arise with multiple morbidities and, and that challenge we've, we've heard about uh, quite often during the course of yesterday and we're hearing more about today. So selecting a target, validating it to an industrially acceptable standard is absolutely critical. I mean, there are some really great targets with very early biology, but they might not be wholly appropriate at the moment, at this moment in time, to be accepted for um, entry into a drug discovery pipeline, and that can be for a number of reasons. And we're fortunate that through the partners of the of the UK Spine uh, Consortium, that we've got access to both um, really early stage understanding of target biology industrial uh, rigor of execution of, of drug discovery projects, as well as the clinical insights and that industrial rigor and tractability assessment, which is critical for determining whether a target is acceptable and has the, I put it this way, has the legs to be, to be worked upon in a drug discovery setting. So we work collaboratively to, uh, and jointly to look at a number of different uh, target sources, um, the different types which might come from previously um, worked on targets such as those brought together by our ITAC consortium partners. There, there are targets which come from an inflammatory background, targets which come from an epigenetic background, and those which we're perhaps not aware of at the moment. So they will come in either from other potential partners uh, through the work of, of Claire and others who you'll hear of later from, from EBI. And we look at that through the, through the perspective of the, of the targets, its mechanism in relationship to disease, um, what it can be exploited on, um, how we can generate innovative assays and, and put those into a, a patient relevant setting with that clinical backdrop. We also look for um, the translatability of those, uh, whether we can develop biomarkers which actually help us to move toward the clinic and whether those targets are actually tractable for drug discovery. Um, and are amenable to, to assays that are both rigorous, but also amenable, uh, which, is, which is critical. When the, the, there may be assets or asset opportunities which we just can't screen at the moment because the technology doesn't allow. Um, that enables us to generate uh, lists of triage targets with good commercial opportunities associated with them, good tractability assessments, that industrial rigor, which is vitally important if we're ever to attract um, interested funding partners in the future. So 
where we are at the moment is um, we're, we've we've currently got within the in the pipeline a number of targets which are associated with a variety of different mechanisms. Um, I'm, I'm not telling you at, the, at this moment uh, what the, the 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 target biology is around, but it's associated with some um, or what the what specific targets are. But it's associated with many of those fundamental um, underpinning processes which can be uh, which we seek to um, change. And, and modify because they're becoming aberrant with respect to the aging process. So we've got targets which have, uh, which are impacting on metabolism, and inflammation, uh, DNA damage and repair, and um, epigenetics and inflammatory processes. And uh, we're also looking at other targets which are coming through now, and uh, we could then develop innovative assays to bring those forward into our biology focus areas. And in terms of what that looks like from the perspective of a, of, a, of a pipeline, then moving from left to right, I've mentioned our triage process, how we're doing that, you know, the, the, the range of targets that we're, that we're, we're, we're accessing. We've got um, strategic governance and oversight through the project steering committee, allowing us to move those targets into um, our drug discovery uh, cascade. So what you can see here is, an emerging drug discovery pipeline where we have uh, currently three targets which are um, in early um, the early stages of of, uh, of of lead generation so one target which has recently exited um, hit discovery and is moving into into hit confirmation another which is following up behind one of which is um, in currently in assay development um, where we're looking at some innovative assays between ourselves in the catapult and colleagues in Dundee. And then some targets uh, which are um, epigenetic related and we're doing a, a piece of work uh, currently on those which is associated with um, understanding their, their validation and, and whether or not they've got the legs to move into, into drug discovery, in, into our pipeline. And under, underneath all of that, we've, we're running our target and diseases associated biomarker program. So the outcome of this, what does this look like for an investment partner, for anybody who wants to join in this endeavor and, and, uh, and, and, and bring their targets into this? Well, what we've hoped to have demonstrated through this is a process for assessing targets, uh, moving them into a drug discovery pipeline with that industrial rigor, understanding how they can be translated through into the clinic alongside innovative biomarker packages, with good line of sight to the clinic and uh, a good commercial imperative, which will be you know, ab absolutely vital for, for any industrial partners. So at the, uh, at, at the end of this uh, round of funding, we're hoping that we will have achieved an outcome which will be of real interest, uh, both specifically for these targets, but more than that, the, the way we're working is, is attractive to others to come in with their targets and for us to work with them in a, in, in a collaborative um, and open way, such that we can move targets rapidly, assess them and execute them and bring them into, into, into uh, clinical trials as quickly as possible to try and achieve those ambitious um, objectives which have been set both by ourselves and also by, by government and other, other, other you know, significant stakeholders. And I think we've we've shown now through the the challenge which has been set by uh, UK Spine um, through the ITAC consortium and others mm -hmm. that we're moving you know, at pace to that uh, along along uh, that ambition and we're we're showing significant progress and I think we're in a great position to set ourselves up for uh, looking for innovative collaborations in the future. So it only goes without uh, saying that. This is a joint endeavor and um, has, has been the um, a pleasure to work with many colleagues on this, um, many of whom are acknowledged here. Um, and it's been a, a, a process of, of, of working through the, the medicines of the catapult, uh, Dundee, Oxford, um, Birmingham, and uh, the EBI open targets to, to, to bring this to fruition. Um, and without the, the, the help of these colleagues, we, we we, we would be uh, you know, much further behind in, in our endeavours. So it's been a, a fantastic opportunity and privilege to work alongside this and to be, and to be funded by UK Spine to, uh, to do this. 
So I will stop sharing now, and I think both Michael and myself will be open for, uh, for any questions. Thank you so much, Graham and Michael. It's really wonderful to hear both sides of the story and look at what we've actually done with the porous pipeline. I think the final slide is really a testament to the number of people that have been pulled together to work on this, which really for me shows that it is all about connecting capabilities. I've got a couple of quick questions. Um, the first of which is for Michael. Uh, so if you're ready, Michael, the question that I have, should you choose to answer it, is do you think we need to further diversify those engaged in the aging porous pipeline to ensure the process is as fast and efficient as possible? In your opinion, are there any obvious gaps? Well, I think it's a, it's a great question. I'm not sure I'm in a position to identify any and, and all possible gaps, but um, certainly, uh, Having um, gone to the trouble of, of assembling the capabilities um, that, that have been assembled, um, you know, you, you want to increase the, the throughput of the pipeline. Um, and the more choice that you have, um, the different projects that you could select to go through it, um, hopefully then the, the, the more chance there is that you'll find something um, which can be successful. Because, of course, uh, as I said in my talk, you know, the, there's, there's a lot of attrition um in drug discovery um and you know you might have to explore hundreds of different um possibilities to to find the thing that we do, which will be truly um very successful so yeah so so it's a numbers game um but also you know that that uh, search for different um partners can bring in more capabilities and also you know the the, the larger the initiative is the more the gravitational pull uh, the the more that you will be the the go to um, uh, collaboration um, for, for people to want to come and join and you have more experience as well to share and to improve even perhaps your success rates. So yes, definitely, um, I would say unreservedly. Thank you. No, I think it's a good point. It is a numbers game um, and Graham, we've only just started with that numbers game. I guess we've got a few questions coming through. I, I've got one personal <laughs> question. While we have um, you here today talking about the pipeline and we have a really wide and diverse audience listening today, what would you say to that audience? Who would you like to get in touch with you? How can they get in touch with you to be part of this excellent project? Is that to Michael or myself or to both of us? You, Graham. Sorry. Did I your pardon. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I'll try and answer that. Who would I like to... Well, someone with deep pockets would be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but that goes without saying, I think. Um, I'm, I'm looking at, I think there's a question posed around, you know, um, what are the challenges uh, to, to attracting that investment? And I think it's fair to say, yes, we are early. Um, we've been, we need to show that the, the, the process that we've started to date can actually deliver molecules which have got the potential to go into the clinic and impact on a process which is related to the fundamental biology of aging but thinking about traditional drug discovery and the needs of potential partners pharma for example or venture capital investors the, the that might be a slightly challenging prospect from the from the perspective of the market that they're going to 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 seek to 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 address because a market is uh, you know usually addressable in a specific and niche indication or not necessarily niche but you know a, a specific indication oncology for example or a specific cancer um, so what are we going to address in that it, it's not aging but it's it's a biology it's a process associated with aging so actually being able to take a molecule through from the from that fundamental understanding of, of aberrant aging, prosecution of it into a drug discovery uh, process, the generation of a molecule which then can be effectively shown to modify biology, which is related to diseases that we understand and can can be can show the market potential. I think that's kind of one of the biggest things we need to to, to face now. So that's a, a challenge for our clinical colleagues as much as it is for ourselves. 
we like challenges and we get sent many challenges by Chaz, who I believe is in the audience and has posed a question as to, are you nationalizing <laughs> discovery? My goodness. Um, it's got to be a, there's some level of public private endeavor here. Nationalizing drug discovery, I mean, would the government put in that amount of money to do so? I think I think there's got to be some there's, there's got to be a high level of competition here to to drive us forward. So I don't think it's going to be a national endeavour. But I think there's there's a, there's certainly a place for for government funding in some of this. And we heard an excellent presentation from from Ivan yesterday about how the MRC is putting money into the multi morbidity area. And maybe there's something around drug discovery there that we need to to look at. But first of all, we need to show that we can actually generate new assets that can be capable in this space. Absolutely. And I think that is a super point to wrap up our question and answer session and this wonderful opening talk this afternoon. So thank you both very much for joining us. And thank you to everybody who I can't see at the moment, but are with us on, on our Hopin platform. We're going to wrap up now and take a short break. I believe we return at 2.45 or as close to as possible. So please, in the interest of aging well, stand up, walk around, make a cup of tea, decaffeinated if you prefer, and we will see you very shortly. Thank you very much. <laughs>